When Ferris Bueller's Day Off hit theaters in 1986, it was yet another knock-it-out-of-the-park success for director John Hughes. Matthew Broderick's iconic portrayal of the charismatic titular character proved to be one of the greatest examples of breaking the fourth wall ever committed to film. Aided by his gorgeous girlfriend Sloan, played by Mia Sara, and neurotic best friend Cameron, played by Alan Ruck, Ferris ditches school with an elaborate plan that would put the Ocean's Eleven crew to shame. With wooden dummies, phony phone calls, well-placed sound effects, a little bit of computer hacking, and what we can only describe as Grand Theft Auto, Bueller is determined to have the best day of his life. But looking back on it over 30 years later, there are certain tricks that would never hold up in this technologically advanced age. And with the cultural landscape having changed so drastically in three decades, it's safe to assume we would get something just a bit different than what Husey Boy dreamed up in the mid 80s. We decided to take a look at what a Ferris Bueller's Day Off movie would look like if it was made today. Social Media Butterfly. Let's be honest, teens these days are addicted to Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, etc., like the dude is to white Russians. A key factor in Ferris eluding capture on his day off is his ability to stay one step ahead of those painfully unaware adults. In fact, the only times he was almost caught were the moments he put himself front and center, whether at a baseball game, on a parade float, or just plain running down the middle of Main Street at rush hour. But it's hard to imagine that today's Ferris wouldn't narcissistically blast himself all over the social media tapestry. He'd be pretty hard-pressed not to share his day's exploits with his presumably large number of followers and friends. The urge would be too great, especially with someone as liked and revered as Ferris Bueller. It's a bit hard staying clandestine when you're posting your every movement for the world to see. First post and Rooney would have been on him like a fly on Gina Davis. Hashtag say Ferris. So many activities. Ferris's day consisted of boosting a car, heading to a baseball game, singing old Beatles and Wayne Newton tunes on a parade float, posing as the sausage king of Chicago so he can dine in a fancy French restaurant and taking in an art gallery. Needless to say, most 17 or 18 year olds would be doing things a bit different. First, daytime baseball games during the week are few and far between. Oh, thank God. And with football a more popular sport these days, it's likely we'd see Ferris at an NFL game instead of the Cubs. Though there aren't any daytime NFL games on a school week, so let's just veto a sporting event altogether. Same goes for massive parades marching down the streets of Chicago. The Von Steuben Day Parade depicted in the film is a weekend parade in September, not a weekday parade in June, as those shysters in Hollywood would have us believe. So it's unlikely we'd see Ferris anywhere near a parade float. Beatles and Wayne Newton would definitely be off the playlist. You'd get more back-to-back -back than Twist and Shout. Thanks to shows like Top Chef and Chopped, restaurants have gotten a little less stuffy and more accessible to the common man. It's unlikely Ferris would have trouble dining at a nice restaurant in Chicago just because he's a teenager in a leatherish jacket. I mean, seriously, do these kids look like hooligans looking to start trouble? As for one-upping a certain snooty mater d', a simple Google search would prevent Ferris from fooling anyone. But again, who cares? Restaurants aren't that hard to get into. So what else does that leave us? Well, Ferris is still capable of pressuring his friend into stealing his dad's prized Ferrari. So that's still on the table. An art gallery is not out of the question, though his day would probably consist more of this than this. But then again, Ferris was always one to play by his own rules. So maybe he'd still find a parade, still sing Twist and Shout, and still catch a foul ball at a daytime ball game. Hell, maybe he'd still wear that leather suede jacket thing. Seriously, what the heck is that made of? I mean, it's probably just leather, right? I'm an idiot. Well, here's hoping they don't try to find a reason to reboot this classic Hughes flick. In the meantime, just remember, life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. <laughs> Thanks for checking out Get to the Movies. If you like what you saw, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe button for more great content uploaded every week.